Hi, welcome to the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. In today's video, we're going to look at a subject which I've had a few questions about in the community, and that is what's my take on slicing your drum programs into non destructive slices or pad parameters? Let's jump in. So this is obviously my take on the differences. There's a bunch of really, really good videos out there, but I just wanted to offer my viewpoint. So I have a beat here, which I've chopped up. Just a quick bit of selfless promotion here. This is a beat off Crates Motel Beats Volume 1, which is available on Bandcamp and on the Crates Motel website. Basically, I've been crate digging since the early 80s and I have thousands of really rare open beats and I've edited them so they're about three minutes long and remastered them and you can buy them from Bandcamp as I said and use them on your beat tapes or sample them etc so I'll put links below for that so a bit of promotion there so this is a beat like I said that I've chopped up if I go into sample edit you can see where I've made the chops and then what I would do once I've made the chops is I would decide by pressing shift Pressing convert, I would decide whether I want to do a non-destructive slice program or a pad parameter program. So let's say I chose non-destructive, I'd hit do it. That would make a non-destructive drum program. And then let's say I wanted to do it again, as I've done here, shift, press again, and I would go pad parameter, I would press do it, done. So now I've got two separate programs. I have a non-destructive slice program and I have a pad parameter program. So starting with the non-destructive program, probably the easiest way to describe this in very basic terms is with non-destructive slices, the slices are stored in the actual sample, so to speak. With pad parameters, they're stored in the program that it's in. So what, what this does, the differences this makes, is probably the best way to show this would be, let's, let's say, okay, so we've got that on pad one. Let's say I copy pad one to pad five. Do it. So now I've got, we go into program edit. Right, and if you check here, we've got slice number. So pad one, two, three, four, it changes here, the slice number. But if you look on pad five here, it's still got slice one because I copied it from slice one to pad five, pad one to pad five rather. So take note of that. It's got slice numbers there basically. And what that means is because the slices are stored inside the actual sample that you've got non-destructively, if I was to change any of the actual slice parameters, let's say for instance I wanted to change the end. So now the slice one has got a bit of the snare drum in it as well. On pad five, which I copied, it's also the same. As you can see, still slice one. So changing the actual slice parameters if you've copied the sample, it's gonna make those same changes on the copied sample. And it would be the same as if you had an entire program and you copied it. Let's, let's say for instance, when, when would I use non-destructive slices? Okay, so I have a drum program. I've copied that complete program onto another drum program. And I've done that because I wanna apply just a certain effect to that whole program that's different from the original program. Or I wanted to add a filter or something like that. But then let's say that in the original program, I decided that I wanted to change some of the parameters on the actual slice, move the slice around a little bit. But I still wanted to keep that copied program exactly the same. So because I've done it in non-destructive, it would do it automatically for me. It'd just be a much, much quicker way. If you want to copy programs or copy multiple pads, etc., using non-destructive slices is just going to be a lot quicker. More, it's, it's, it's not even about accuracy, it's going to be exactly the same because any slice that you change will be changed on the other programs or on the other, on the other pads. So at a very basic level, that's the main difference with non-destructive slices. The slices information is stored in the sample, so if you make any changes, then it's going to change on the copy pads or the copy programs. If, not, if I was to change any of the other parameters, let's say the tuning, let's take that down by one. Pad 5 has still got slice 1 on it, but it hasn't changed. It's only really the slice parameters that actually change. So any other changes that you make in the parameters are going to actually be changed. So, you know, theoretically you could copy the same pad 
16 times and you could change the tuning on each one if you wanted to. I mean, that's quite a, a long way around doing it, but you could actually do that if you wanted to. So you can remember that the other parameters that you change will actually change on that slice. It's literally just the slice parameters, as far as I'm aware. So let's take that back again. Now, another thing to remember as well with non-destructive slices, if we go into sample edit and we go into the program page, if you hold shift, it gives you the option to pad. And that basically means that if I wanted to, I could actually change pad five to pad parameters and then I could I could actually make individual changes to the slice and it wouldn't be be affecting what I've done on one or what I've done on five. Also I want to point out that if you did adjust for instance the parameters on five it would also change what's going on in number one because you are changing slice number one no matter where you've put it I could have put it on any other pad if I change the, the, the slice parameters it will change that same slice on any of, the, any of the other pads or any other programs that have got that slice in it. So now let's go into pad parameters. So I've got exactly the same program. But this time I converted it using pad parameters. So this time, if we go into program edit, you'll see on the slice here, it says pad. It doesn't give you a pad a slice number or anything. So. If we go come back out again, let's do the same. Copy pad one to pad five. Okay, exactly the same at the moment. But we go into the program edit, choose pad five. Now, if I was to change the end again, like I did earlier in the non-destructive, let's say we just make that the kick. Now, You can see I've copied one to five, but the changes I've made, because they're stored in the program rather than the sample, I can change the slice and it will stay, it won't affect the other pad that I've just copied. So that's really useful for me, for instance. So I mean, actually the reason why, if you were gonna ask, the reason why I tend to favor pad parameters is because of the way my workflow, I tend to take uh, original, like, like a whole break, something like that, and then I'll then take that whole break and I'll, I might play it in slightly different order, but then I'll chop certain parts of that break out, like maybe a hi-hat, maybe a different snare drum, maybe a uh, the kick drum, like I've done here, and then I would layer those parts over the top to make the beat sound slightly different to the original. So it's still got the original vibe of the original break, but I've added little bits in, so it sounds like I've made a new version of the break. So that's why I tend to favor pad parameters, because I do like to be able to chop other parts out of the actual original sample. And that's basically it. Pretty straightforward differences. But there are times when you would choose non-destructive and there are times when you choose pad parameter. That's for you to decide, there's no right or wrong. You might find down the line there's a, you prefer pad parameters over non-destructive or vice versa. But it's good, it's worthwhile learning the disadvantages and advantages of both styles of program because then you can decide, you know, in whatever situation you might be and which is the best one to use. Another thing to remember as well with, with both of the options is that you're saving the slice information in the sample or the program. You're not actually slicing the sample up and saving separate samples. So when you save a one bar loop that's been chopped up, you're only actually saving that one bar. You're not saving separate samples. You can actually chop it up into separate samples if you choose, but that's actually a different option altogether. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more mixing, mastering and MPC tutorials and reviews. This is The Crates Motel. My name's Conan, till next time.